with the Parsha of Bamidbar 929, English edition, enters the fourth great book of Torah and Tanakh. And Bamidbar is, has some striking similarities with the book of Shemot. They both contain stories about rebellions of the people, about their complaints about water and about food. Both contain a major sin that threatens the very project of the journey to the promised land, Shemot the golden calf, Bamidbar the sin of the spies. And in both, we see both Moses and God losing patience with this difficult, obstinate, backsliding people. But there is one great difference between them. Shemos is the journey from. Bamidbar is the journey to. Shemot tells the story of the escape from slavery and the journey from Egypt to Sinai. Bamidbar is about the journey from Sinai to the brink of the promised land. And it's not so much about the escape from slavery as the journey toward responsibility. And that is what makes Bamidbar so much more challenging a book. Um, there is no doubt that it's relatively easy to persuade people to leave slavery. Everyone knows that there's something wrong with where we are and most people are willing to journey to escape from it. But to persuade people to accept the responsibilities of freedom and everything that goes with it, that is much harder. And that's why you see a much darker tone to the stories in Bamidbar and Moses himself coming very close to almost total despair. Bamidbar begins and towards the end contains a census, the first census of the Israelites as they left Egypt, the second census of the next generation as they traveled toward Israel. And that is why it's called in English the Book of Numbers. It was called by the early rabbi Sefer HaPakudim, the Book of Numbers of Counting of Census. But in a sense, the name Bamidbar in the wilderness more powerfully sums up the essence of the book, because that is what we have to go through to get from here to there. Every journey from one state to another, every rite of passage, every transformation, whether of individuals or a people, needs that inner wrestling which needs liminal space, the space that is neither starting point nor destination, but the point where we wrestle with ourselves and acclimatize ourselves to a new stage in life, individually the stage from childhood to adulthood or from being single to being married. These are rites of passage. And Bamibar tells the story of the Israelites' rite of passage from liberated slaves to free human beings. And it turns out to take more than one generation. What's really interesting and unique, however, is this. Joseph Campbell, the famous recounter of the myths of humankind, has a book called The Journey of the Hero. In almost every story of the foundation of a religion, the hero undertakes a journey, literally or metaphorically, through the wilderness. What makes Judaism unique is this is a journey not just undertaken by the hero, but by the whole people. It is everyone who is called on, as it were, to become heroic. And that is what makes this book remarkable and very powerful. Despite all the sins and all the difficulties and all the challenges and all the false turns, every one of us has to make that journey. Every one of us in this book of Numbers has to count. So as you read the rest of Boa Midbar, bear in mind that each of us has to undertake this journey through the wilderness of time in search of our promised land. And bear in mind that we will be assailed from time to time by fear, usually fear of failure, but sometimes even fear of success. And we have to conquer that fear if we are to complete the journey in safety. There is only one way to get from here to there, and that is to leave behind 
the habits of everything that makes us complacent with what we were and be willing to travel to what we might be. And as the book begins, so may our journey begin, inspired by the call to the land just over the horizon that we are traveling to guided by God's pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy 929.